I'm talking about healing today. So if someone is healing in the building, he is able. He's more than able. It's from 2 Kings 5, verse 8 to 14. And it goes. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king saying, why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman, say Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a, set a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Say seven times. And your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry. He was vexed. Angry, um, angry and went away saying, behold, I thought. Say, I thought. I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. And not Abana and uh, Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, Damascus, better than all waters of Israel. Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. When another level of upset, man. Verse 13. But his servant came near and said to him, my father, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, wash and be clean? And our last verse. So he went down and dipped himself seven. Thank you that you've chosen me to be your vessel, God. God, let me hide behind your cross this morning, God. I pray the ears and hearts of people will be open to receive your word, Lord. God, I pray that people that came in will let go of their burdens at your feet, God, that they will be changed by one word. By one word that they'll hold on to that will change their atmosphere, their homes, or even their attitudes, or even their belief. Let their unbelief become believing people, God. We love you. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come on, church. Come on. Take a seat this morning. Take a seat. Man, it was almost 13 years ago. That I had my first child, Gabriel Elias Beresford. It was October the 5th, early morning. I will, actually, it was October 4th I, on a Saturday. I woke up in the morning. And I was kind of feeling kind of funny. Nine months pregnant, you know, aches and pains. The baby's coming soon. And uh, there was a couple signs saying, I think I'm going to have a baby today. I think I'm in labor. And so I call the doctor up. And I say, hey, um, doctor, I think I need to come in. I think this baby's coming. She's like, all right, you know what? Come in, get ready and come in. And so I said, okay. She called me to come in. I said, oh, I said to myself, we about to have a baby today. So I washed my hair, blow dried my hair, flat on my hair, put on my nice shirt, my nice jacket, put on my earrings. And I, I said, babe, let's go. Put, the, put the, bag, the bag in the back seat and the car seat. So we drive to the hospital. I get there. I walk up in there looking kind of cute with my bad self, ready. I'm said, I'm ready to have this baby. And the nurse goes, honey, honey, honey. I said, what? I am, she's like, hold on. So they put me in the triage room. And I get into the triage room. And they're like, you are not even close to have this baby today. You are not even dilated. I said, but I'm feeling on the pain. She's like, no. I said, but I'm feeling cute. I'm ready. And she's like, no, go home. So they sent me back home. And by, that was like around 11 o'clock. By 3 p.m., I went to the mall. And I started having um, contractions at the mall. And by evening time, I was in full-blown labor. And I get to the hospital at 11 p.m. Again, I put back on my cute outfit with my earrings. And I get there, and the nurse goes, here's your bag. Um, take off the earrings. Take off your clothes. Here's the cap and gown. I had a plan how I wanted to have a baby. I walked in thinking it's going to be amazing. That evening, I had vomit in my hair. It was, it was a, a different situation. I was all over the place. But I thought I knew how I wanted to have a baby, even though it's God's ordained time and place how a baby's going to come. But I had a plan. Just like here, let's look at the text like Naaman. He had a plan. And Naaman said, he says here, he said, So Naaman came, to his, came with his horse, horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. 
But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leopard. Listen, he's talking to the third person, the leopard, but it's about himself. My first point this morning is value transformation over your expectation. Value transformation over your expectation. Listen, Naaman got the word that he was going to get healed. But he focused so much on the method that he forgot that he actually was in cue to have a healing. And I can think about now, he's like, he comes and, listen, Naaman is this high-level chief commander person, a man of valor. He came, I didn't read the, the verses before, but it says that he came with his entourage. He came with lots of money. He came with 10 pairs of clothes for this trip. He was ready for this thing. And so when he got there, he goes to the door, and Elisha doesn't even come out. He was offended. The man of God doesn't even come out to me. He says, behold. He says, behold, I thought he would. Listen, how many we see to God? Behold, I thought, God, you would. God, I came to the hospital. I thought you would make this easy, this pregnancy or this birth. God, I thought when you said that I'm going to try this new thing at church, just giving, offering, sowing, generosity, I thought I'd be out of bankruptcy already. Uh, Lord, you know what? I am in, in die needing of a healing. I came to the man of God, and I thought he would put his healing anointing oil on me, but God, I'm still in pain. I thought... I thought, Lord, that, you know what, I waited to marriage, and I can't still have a baby. I thought. I'm struggling. I, all I want to do is have this child. I thought. How many of us are in this place of I thought? And we get angry. Man, the man was vexed. I would have been vexed, too. He came all the way. He came as entourage all the way to the man of God's house, and the man doesn't even come out his house to give him a word. And the other part is what I find is interesting. And even Naaman's like, okay, I've come here, and this is how my healing is going to work, Lord. You're gonna, he's going to wave his hand over me. He's going to touch my leper. And leprosy was a place, it was a skin disease that was incurable. That It was a death sentence. And I'm thinking about this week as we prepare for this month long of a revival. Is what are you thinking your, your revival or your, your breakthrough is going to look like? Are you thinking, you know, I'm, I have to be at the house, Lord. I have to be there. I need the man of God to talk. Pick me, pick me. You know what? Sometimes you go to those revivals and they don't call on you and you're upset. You, went, you came out of work early. You made sure you came. You brought your offering and they didn't call your name. We have a God that doesn't need to come all the way there. You can be at home even though you're on the online camp. God can meet you at your house. You don't have to be. That's how strong a God that we have. Do not focus on the method, but on the message. He wants to revive your obedience. He wants to revive your obedience. And when I think about Naaman being this chief commander military person, God was like, you know, let me humble you because you're so used to being in that situation. Then I'm going to bring you in a humble place here. And so let's go further and go back to the story here. And he goes here, he says, are not... Um, Abana and Pafar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the rivers of Israel. Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he returned, he, he, he turned and went away in rage. And my second point for you is, God is more interested in your submission than your suggestions. God is more interested in your submission than your suggestions. Listen, I can just hear now, Lord, can I not just go to the, Ni the Niagara Falls to dip? Can I not just go to the, the, wall, the, the falls of Hamilton, the nice rivers there? I've been to the Jordan. That water is, water is dirty. Listen, it's very dirty, muddy water. I remember being there and the flies looming around the water. And I think about Naaman thinking, he's like, you know what? I'm so used to giving the orders versus actually receiving the instruction. And how many times when God has a word for us or God wants to do something, it sometimes, it, he does the opposite that we want to do. Because a lot of times we're the ones, you know, even with our kids, we're the ones telling them what to do. We have the authority, we're at work. But sometimes God like, puts you in to humble you to be in the place that you need to receive. 
I remember I've been there so many times when I need financial help. I'm so used to giving, giving, giving. But when at the moment God humbles you and you need to receive the help. Right. And I find at that moment that when you see God even stronger than before, you're like, man, God, how are you going to come through? Because I've never been in that place. But God will humble you to show where he, where he is in your life. And so when I think about, you know, when he's saying, can we go over to this? Can we go back to Damascus? The rivers are there. Listen, he got the word from the man of God that he was going to heal. He was at the cusp of his healing. But yet he wanted to go somewhere else better that he thought. And how many times are we like, God, this is not good. Well, I think, you know, this. Over, let's go over there. We spend our money. Like, God, I want to go to, to one of my um, very wonders of the world, Dun River Falls. I'm going to go spend my money, get the plane ticket, go to Jamaica. I want to go to that water. Spend your resources that you probably don't have. But you don't want to be in alignment with what God's saying because it's not what you thought it would be. And I think about Naaman, at a, what cost are you willing to spend and almost waste when God's saying right now? I have you right here at this time at such a time as this. And I think about Naaman and he's thinking, man, I'm right here. You want me? And, you know, this in his one, he, he brought his people, there was about 100, 150 people that he was over, that he brought with him to the man of God. And I can only think, okay, Lord, so you're asking me to take off everything in front of these people. Taking off his regalia, taking off his badge of honor, whatever that looked like, to humble himself in front of his people, but they're so used to seeing him at that level, but he needed a healing. How bad do you want your breakthrough? And listen, when God is calling you to something, he's never calling you to embarrass you. But he's calling to empower you, even though it's uncomfortable. It can be very uncomfortable. And I remember many, 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 many years ago, the beginning years of my marriage, that I, I remember, you know, my husband and I, we were, you know, trying to keep ourselves together, you know, even we were madly in love together. And I remember being in his apartment late at night. And I'm thinking, I, late at night, we're watching something on the futon, you know, futon days, back in the day, college time. And I remember putting my head on his shoulder. And at, at that moment, I said, I feel uncomfortable that I feel comfortable. I feel uncomfortable that I feel comfortable. When you're in that place when God's asking you to do something, do you feel too comfortable that you want, you're not even listening to his word? You want to be in a place when God's telling you something that you want to be obedient. You want to be uncomfortable. You want to be like, hey, Lord, are you really? Because when you're uncomfortable, you're asking in God, like, God, are you asking me to do this? But when you feel comfortable and you feel you have it all together, like, okay, let's just do this. But there's something that you're checking in with God when you're in that place of wavering. Figuring it out, God, what do you want me? You want, are you, you want me to go to the left? Do you want me to go to the right? Do you want me to call this person? Do, should I ask for forgiveness? Like, what do you want me to be? When you are too confident in yourself, you can miss what God is trying to do for you. To, and in James 4, 7, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will free from you. Submit to God. Do not submit God your suggestions. But submit to God, to, to submit to whatever he has for you. And I think about, you know, all the things that Naaman's probably thinking is, I'm thinking about, I, I'm embarrassed maybe to do this in front of my people. But how bad do we want the breakthrough? How bad do we want the thing that we've been waiting for and crying over? And I'm thinking, Naaman, you're on the way to death. And you're worried about the method? You're worried about the method, and you're on the... How many times we are worried about what God is calling us to do? I don't know what God is calling to you, because in this season, God will speak to you if your ears are open in this month. He will speak, but the question is, will you be obedient? Will you be obedient? And further along in the scripture, it says here, it says, But his servants came near and said to him, my father, it is great word the prophet has spoken to you. You will you, to you. Will you not do it as he actually said to you? Wash and be cleansed. And another scripture in like in um, the New Living Translation, it says it says here. But his officer tried to reason with him and said, "Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it?" So you should certainly obey with him. And he, when he says simply, go and wash and be cured. Listen, I think about if, 
if Elisha would told Naaman to do something difficult, it would have been easy in his power almost to do it. And so he can get the credit for it. And a lot of times we cannot submit to God when God's asking us to do something simple. Simply get up and pray with me. Come pray with me or pray for me or pray with me. And like, oh, no, Lord, I need to go to um, the, the church to be praying at 7 a.m. every day. And God's like, no, 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 I want you to get up. Can you get up first on your own? Because we know that people are waiting at the church for you because people will recognize you. There. But when people are not watching, will you show up with me? And our God day early in the morning, he's asking. Not when you know that your friends are going to be at Revival Week in August 22nd, plug right there. But will you be there when no one is watching you at 7 a.m. or 6 or wherever the, he's calling you to? Because after revival is over, we will not be in the house. You will be left with your thoughts. You will be left with your whatever burdens you did not leave at the altar. Right? And I, we really have to make sure that we're obedient to his word. And so my third point is, here is God often positions people to point you to the place of purpose. Point number three. God often positions people to point you to the place of purpose. At that moment, he had a servant come up to him and said, Sir, and in the ESV he says, My father, with respect. Who has your ear when you're angry? Who has your ear when you are frustrated? Who has your ear when you're insecure with the thing that God's trying to push you to? Who has your ear in those times? And I think about God can use the most unlikely person to talk to you. No matter where you are in your life, he can use the grocery person. He can use anybody. And I think about this last year, March, at the beginning of the pandemic. My husband and I went to Walmart. And we're, you know, we're standing in the Walmart lines at the time. Everyone's out outside with the lines. And in front of me happened to be, not happened, you know, God, there's no happenstance in God. It's just always a God thing. The lady and man before me was actually a lady who works at the, we have a daycare here at Surf City that's hosted at the building. She was actually one of the workers. And I was like, hey, she's like, hey, I'm like, how are you doing? How is the pandemic going for you? She said, the week of the pandemic, I got a call from my doctor and I thought I have breast cancer. I said, wow. And she said, you know what, but God is so faithful. God is so good. Listen, when I said the woman had joy in her voice, I said, what? I don't want a piece of that. She said, I believe that God is going to heal me. She believed that God was healing. She said, I already prepared for like, the chemo. I'm already buying my wigs already. She had like, she was already in good faith. And then her husband goes, a week before the day the pandemic hit, he said, I just started a new job at Sunwing. I'm a pilot. But I'm at the bottom of the barrel. And so I thought that I was going to start a new job. It was actually, my, my first day was actually my last day. But he said, but we have a serve a good God. I said, oh, my word. Yeah. These two men, one of them together said, I'm sitting there. Honestly, I want to cry. I'm like, they're my, I'm like, you're blowing. We're in a pandemic, and you're praising God. You have cancer. You've lost your job. They said, God's going to provide. You know, our I said, how are your kids? Oh, our kids are good. I think their name is Matthew and Mark. And God used that woman at a, at a Walmart line to encourage my faith. To see, even though I'm in a pandemic, God is still working. You're, God can do something. And so I say that. Who is God using in your life that's unlikely you think he wants to use to get you the place of purpose? Yeah, and do not just rely on the man of God, the woman of God in your life to be like, oh, I have to be at their, I have to be where they are. No, God will use your children. God will use your coworkers. God will use people on the internet. God will use like any little thing. God will use when he wants to talk to you, he will talk to you. And many of us overlook when God is trying to speak to us because we're looking for the big thing, the, the loud noise. He's everywhere. And he's not just speaking to your BFF besties either. When we think that he, they're the only people that can speak into our lives. We need to be open. We've got to be cautious. Test the spirit, the, the word says. But be open to what God is saying to you at that time and so i am so glad to report that she is back working she is healed she has no cancer no more come on and when i come to the office every day she's waving hey i'm like hey girl how you look she's good my hair's growing back she's a back full back of hair and she really really encouraged my faith she really really did and so when i think about naaman 
He had people in his circle. He had people in the vicinity. He had people in the, his proximity. Who is in your proximity of influence yeah, yeah, yeah. to push you into purpose? Is it just family members? You got to just think, really think about in this season, and especially in revival. Listen, the enemy is going to come. I'm telling you, we're walking into revival. It's April, August 1st. Prepare for the enemy to speak to you. Prepare for the con- counterfeits to show up. It's August, it's August 1st, and I already feel like in my home already, the Lord is, um, the enemy is already trying to rise up. And so when you're trying to get to the next level, the devil will try and try and try. But you got to be in a place. They have people that will speak for you, that will call you, that will text you and say, hey, keep on going. Remember why we came all the way here, Naaman. Why, why did we come all the way from our home to get here? Because you came for your breakthrough. You came for your healing. Right? And here, and it says here in the, 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 the end part of the verse here, it says, So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like flesh, like a, sorry. And his flesh was restored like flesh of a little child. And he was clean my fourth point here is don't practice partial obedience on the path the path of the promise don't practice partial obedience on the path to the promise and when i think about here god does not do shortcuts when he gives you word he gives you a full word and let me drop a little nugget here the long way is the shortcut the long way is the short. Listen, many people, when they try to do all these hacks, cheat codes, all this stuff, a lot of times they don't work out. You try to get this loan to call, um, consolidate that loan, and also you have a higher interest rate, then now you're five more years in debt when you've just been faithful paying that minimum payment every month or even a more, actually more than the minimum payment. But a lot of times we want to always take a shortcut. Listen, I'm the one. When I see this traffic on the highway, I'm always trying to get a side, a side street, and then I'm stuck there. I'm like, man, I should just stay on the 401. And I get so irritated because, and a lot of times, listen, we think that we're taking a shortcut, but when we know God, God already sees the future. So when he's putting you on the path and you want to be obedient, he knows all the things that are coming along the way on the path. But as when we go on the shortcut, we don't know what's coming up to us. So the long way is the shortcut. Listen, there's no catwalks with God's obedience. There's no abbreviation when God is calling you to the very thing. Go all the way to the thing. Listen, when Naaman got in the water, he could have stopped at three. When he's like, listen, I still have these boils on me. Lord, what are you, should I get out, should I get out the water now? Delayed obedience is still disobedience. Let me say that again. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. We do not practice partiality when God is calling us some, to something. We give you the full, the full thing. The man of God said, dip in the water seven times. And listen, the miracle, this is where the miracle hit. Naaman knew his faith was great. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to minimize our faith. His faith was great because when he said, can I go to this body of water, Lord, so for you to heal me? He knew that his healing was there. The miracle happened when he activated his obedience because it already was there. He already knew what's going to happen. And so when we think about when God is telling us, it's not like we have to have faith. I believe God can do the healing. God can do the breakthrough. But the question is, will you be fully obedient to the word? And a lot of times we focus so much on our faith. And also the word says, um, faith without works is got to do it, something with it. Got to do something with it. And I really believe one step in obedience can change our lives. I really, really believe that. And I think about so many times that I get scared and we get so focused on what people are going to think about us. When we're, you know, when God's calling us maybe to the altar to raise your hands, when, when we do the altar call, or God's calling you to, listen, you can have all the faith that God saved and you died on the cross for your sins. But the next step of obedience, what is baptism? A lot of us want to stay, and I tell people all the time, like, it's great to be engaged, but it's another thing to be in covenant marriage. It's another thing. We can stay at the engagement. We can say the salvation prayer. We can say, I believe by faith. But listen, there's something when you declare your faith out loud with the family through baptism. Being obedient to the word of God. And so, listen, it's not trying to call shame, but there's something, though. We all want to be a part of that wedding. 
Listen, I'm, I don't do closet door weddings. I don't do closet court. Listen, I don't, these girls or boy or whatever, the relationships that do, don't want to tell people they have no man. Listen, I'm telling everybody I have a man. Because if I love him that much, I'm going to tell everyone that I have a husband, that I love this person. He's not going to be in the closet. He is, I'm not doing a closet husband or a closet boyfriend or a fiance or whatever. There's something that we want to declare that, right? I want to be obedient to my love and I want to show it to other people. And lastly, there's a story in John 9, 6 that I want to just really go to and share. And it says here, and it says, having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes. This is obviously pre-COVID, guys. <laughs> <laughs> then he anointed the man's eyes with mud and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. That man could have said, I don't want your nasty spit in the water on my eyes. But he was willing because he wanted his sight. He was willing to do the thing. How are willing are you to do the thing that God is asking you? Are you willing to rise up at 5 a.m. even though you might work the night shift? Wow. Even when you're tired, even when you're sick in your body and God, you know you have an ailment, you're like, and God's calling you to come to church on a Sunday morning when you've worked a long, long hours and you're tired and you're sick. Are you willing to do the very thing? Are you willing to go against the grain? Because listen, this is a, a different season. And when I, when I, I want everything that God has for me. I want to be when God says, go, I'm there. Yeah. I don't want to be deliberating. Then God, are you, are, are you sure you want me there? Can I, can I, can I tell you, can we do something a little different? I remember when my husband told me to leave my job years, years ago. I said, no, 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 no. Can we kind of work this out a little bit? He's like, no. And even my, my husband said directly to me, he said, I'm going to pray for you for strength and peace, woman of God. And I said, oh, Lord. And I begged for just part-time. I, I, wanted, I wanted part-time because I saw my identity in my job and not be home with my kids. And my husband said to me, I never wanted to rob you of the gift of watching your children. It's my gift to you that I want you to be home with your kids. And at that time, I struggled. I wanted to be, I wanted to be home. I wanted to be at the workplace. You know, I, I had all this, I had a good degree. I've worked so hard. And I, I just didn't look, look at it the same way. And at the time, I had people, the naysayers saying, yeah, why would you leave your job to be home with your kids? And I was like, you know, the Lord's calling me. But then I was like, well, maybe the Lord's calling like part-time. But the, the man of God said full-time. <laughs> I, I, told, I told the husband, do you realize we need money? Like, I have, I'm giving up benefits? He said, yeah, but you know what? And I'm telling you, those were tough days. My husband said, I will eat the last, I'll give you even our last cup of rice if we have to. But I'd rather us be obedient to what God's saying for our household. And God was so faithful. In that season, there was miracle after miracle after miracle. The stories we have in that season was because of our obedience. And I think about Surf City, we are six months away of being five years old. Wow! I can't believe it. When I look out to everybody and those online, I cannot believe we're almost five. And listen, when we came back and my husband said, I think it's time to go back to Toronto. I think we should start a church. I said, church what? No, I've done this before. I don't want to do it again. And when I thought about it, there's a couple things. I'm thinking, who's going to show up? We, you know, we lived in the States for 14 years, right? And we, did a, we left Canada when we were about 18 years old. And I'm like, who's going to show up? We're now in our 30s. We don't know anybody in Toronto anymore. Who's going to show up to a church, to two people? A, a girl from Oshawa and a man from Malvern. Who's going to come to a church? In Pickering, well, at first we were at Scarborough. Who's going to come? And I remember wrestling, God, man, do I, do I really want to do this? And I really prayed, and I remember praying, God, I don't want to hinder what, you're, what you are doing for this city. Yeah. I do not want to hinder. And so the power of my yes, when I, every week I look at it, I'm like, God, the power of my obedience, the power to my yes. And today you guys are here at Surf City, and there's so many salvations and baptisms and babies and people we've married. But there's something with the power of our yes. There's something when we want to obey what God is saying. And so I leave you 
with this to remind you my points. Value transformation over your expectation. God is more interested in your submission than your suggestions. God often positions people to point you to the place of purpose. And lastly, don't practice partial obedience on the path to the promise. Let us pray. God, I thank you for this moment, God. I thank you for loving us, God. I thank you for the word that came forth, God. I pray that we will revive our obedience in this season, God. That and even though it could be a simple word, God, that we will not even take um, stop and think about, but we will go all the way. Even if it's a hard thing, God, I pray that we will have the courage to follow your word. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for your good news, the gospel. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for being the God of our tomorrows and you're already in our futures. We thank you, God, for who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. That was so good. Come on. Were you blessed by that? If you were blessed, can you put those hands together and give the Lord praise? Come on. Can we honor Pastor Chantal and give God praise in the chat online as well? Put those hands together. Glory to the Lord. Listen, I am so on. What an incredible word challenging us in the area of obedience. Come on. What a way to start. Revive our obedience, oh Lord. Oh my. You know, this whole month we believe is going to be an impactful month. But it's going to be pointless if we don't do that which the Lord tells us to do. And for you, some of you today who are, lit, who are here in the house and are online, your heart and your desire and the call of God on you right now is to be baptized to come to the lord to give your life to him and somebody's saying why would i do that what's the point why do i need to do that well the fact of the matter is that thousands of years ago our first parents adam and eve they disobeyed god the bible makes it clear that sin and death consequently passed on to all mankind because of their error and because of their sin but the good news is somebody say the good news Come on, put some caffeine in that voice. Say the good news. Somebody in the chat put good news. Is that just about 2,000 years ago that Jesus came down to the earth and says, although the wages of sin is death, although the wages of sin is death, not just physical death, but also spiritual separation from God in hell forever. Because we believe in hell. The Bible teaches it and it's real. He says, I'm going to come to earth. I'm going to live perfect on your behalf. Because you can do nothing to justify yourself and make yourself right before God. And so it's, a, it's good news that not only did he die, but he also rose from death. Somebody say, he got up. Got up from death on the third day with all power in his hands. And you know, there are a number of scriptures when you think about salvation, notable that I share every week. The apostle Peter is getting ready he, you know, Pentecost happened. The Holy Spirit fell on all flesh. And when that took place, you know, people are looking, saying, what's going on here? And he preaches the gospel to them, like I've just preached to you, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. And like you heard in the message that Pastor Chantal shared. And the people, 3,000 of them say, what must we do to be saved? What are we supposed to do with this information that you just shared with us? And in this moment, you know, this, he, he says something that echoes and kind of shares the sentiments of many passages that talk about how you are saved in Scripture. And so the fact of the matter is he says, you can't add to the gospel, but he calls them to respond to what Jesus has done. He calls them to respond to the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus by number one, repenting. Everybody say repenting. In other words, acknowledging that you are a sinner that you are in need of salvation and to repent means to turn from serving yourself and serving the enemy and just kind of living your own life and saying God I'm sorry and not just God I'm sorry but turn to him make a 180 in faith and put your trust and your faith in him as Lord and Savior and then he goes on and he says be baptized everybody say be baptized and he says, for the remission of your sins. Somebody say, for the remission of your sins. And so it's not just about reciting a cute prayer. It's not just about saying, Jesus, I confess you as Lord. But it's about sealing the deal in baptism. And so it's important 
for many of you today there are many who have even just made a profession of faith in Christ but you've never been baptized and I'm pointing over here because we have a baptism coming up this Sunday come on somebody there's people that will be baptized and I want to invite you if you want to be a part of what God is doing to make that decision to give your life to Christ to repent believe and be baptized and you might be someone who's like you know what I was baptized and I just ran away from the Lord and I'm and I'm to the place where you know I want to come back home I want to give my recommit my life to Christ if that person is you you don't need to be rebaptized. no if you were validly baptized the first time and genuinely minted and all that you can just repent today and say God I'm sorry and you can come back to him on today isn't that good news as well come on somebody and so I want to give you a moment if you would bow your heads close your eyes I want to give you a moment whoever you are whether it's your first time and today you're saying I'm responding to this gospel by repentance faith and baptism and I want to make that decision today for the first time or if you're like you know what I want to recommit my life to Christ and come back home online this applies to you too if you're in your living room I see you there where you are close your eyes and just do some introspection where are you with Jesus at this moment where are you with Jesus do you need to make that decision and so if that person is you on the count of three I want you to pop that hand up between me you and God and if you're courageous enough even in the chat to go ahead put a hand up emoji and let them know in the chat so our hosts can see you and they can celebrate you in this moment so here we go on the count of three if you're in the house every head bow every eye closed on the count of three if that's you pop that hand up real high here we go one two three come on pop that hand up real high I see those hands praise God I, yes I see those hands glory to God all over in the house today glory to God and online praise the Lord I see you in the spirit glory to God come on can we open our eyes and now just begin to celebrate those who made decisions for Christ glory to God we love it and I'm so excited about all of you who were compelled today listen uh, we are getting ready I'm going to share with you in a minute to celebrate communion in an extraordinary way for the first time here at Serve City the way that we are getting ready to do it but before this I want to pull you in and encourage you uh, church those who have made that decision today for Christ I want you uh, those who are watching and those who are in the house go to the connection card right now wherever you are and I want you to let us know if you made the decision don't be ashamed of it follow through Go ahead and check off if you decide to be bapti baptized. No, not baptism. Ba no perfect people allowed. If you decide to be baptized, go ahead, check that off and let us know about that decision so we can follow up with you and, and uh, connect with you around scheduling your baptism. If you recommitted your life to Christ, uh, go ahead and check that off and let us know that you have made that decision so that we can also celebrate with you. If you're desirous of becoming a part of the church family, becoming a volunteer, or you know learning about your gifting and your skills and you know what God has called you to do we would love 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 to help you discover that and find that out and you can sign up for next steps everybody say next steps you can do that right on the connection card it happens uh, right after service as you heard on the announcements that Kimberly shared and it's starting next week and I'm excited those who are ready to put a ring on it uh, and actually become a part of the church fam this is most definitely an opportunity for you praise God